Hey, welcome to learning Enscape with SketchUp. In this introductory beginners level course for Enscape 3.2, you will learn the basics to get started and get productive with Enscape in no time. In about 45 minutes, you will explore how to install and run Enscape for the first time. We will set up materials, place 3D assets and export still images, videos and standalone files. You can follow along with your own project files. All projects used in this learning path can be found on our free sample projects page, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. Have fun using Enscape. Let's have a look at the Enscape system requirements. Enscape is only available for Windows at this point, so you need to be running on a Windows operating system, Windows 10 or later. Mac users running on an Intel-based machine can install Windows using Bootcamp to run Enscape. Apart from the operating system, you will also need a graphics card powerful enough for Enscape to run. Here we require either a graphics card from AMD or from NVIDIA with at least 4GB of VRAM. To check what graphics card you are using, go back to your computer desktop and right click onto an empty space. Make sure to click on an empty space and not onto an icon. Here you should see either AMD Radeon settings or the NVIDIA control panel. If you only see an Intel graphics settings menu entry, chances are you have just an onboard Intel graphics card and cannot run Enscape on this machine. Check your computer's hardware to make sure your Nvidia or AMD graphics card is not just disabled. If your machine contains just an Intel onboard graphics card, consider upgrading to a more powerful system. If you're using an AMD or Nvidia graphics card, we are going to update our graphics card driver in the next step. You can imagine the graphics card driver to be something like an interpreter between Enscape and your graphics card. It's good to keep it updated to ensure Enscape can run properly. Before running Enscape for the first time, make sure to update your graphics card driver. Please do this, regardless of whether Windows tells you it's up to date or not. For this, either use the link to our recommended graphics card drivers in the description of this lesson, or find the latest graphics card driver for your card as described in the next steps. For NVIDIA, first let's find out what graphics card exactly you have. For this, let's turn to our desktop. Click on an empty area and choose the NVIDIA control panel. You should see the name of your graphics card there. Keep this window open for now, so you can look up the name anytime. Visit www.nvidia.com. That's N-V-I-D-I-A dot com. Click on Drivers and select all NVIDIA drivers. Now use the drop-down list to select your graphics card. For example, for an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080, I select GeForce for product type, RTX 20 series for product series, and GeForce RTX 2080 for product. Make sure to select the right operating system and language as well, and click on Search and download the phone driver. Once it's downloaded, execute the file and follow the instructions to update your graphics card driver. Enscape is currently available for Revit versions 2018 to 2022, SketchUp 2018 to 2021, Rhino 6 and 7, Archicad 21 to 25, and Vectorworks 2020 Service Pack 3, 2021 and 2022. If you are using a different design application than the ones mentioned, like Revit LT or an older design application version, consider to upgrade to one of the supported versions to be able to use Enscape. 
Before we move on and have a look at how to install Enscape, let me first highlight the knowledge base for you. The Enscape knowledge base is a great way to look up in-depth knowledge about all topics Enscape. If you're missing a detail in this course, or you want to read up on things in your own pace, please check out our knowledge base by visiting www.enscape3d.com, clicking Learn and Knowledge Base. To install Enscape, first make sure you have the installer available. This can be done by either applying for a trial on our website or by purchasing a license key. You receive a download link in both cases. Which version you are installing is irrelevant. The student version, the trial version and the paid version all use the same installer. The only thing left is to make sure none of the supported CAD softwares are running while you complete the installation. Just close all programs beforehand. Double-click the installer and follow the instructions and you'll be fine. After the installation process is finished, you will find the Enscape menu in your SketchUp interface under Extensions. Enable the handy toolbar by right-clicking on the empty part of your SketchUp toolbar and enabling Enscape. You're good to go. You can start Enscape now by pressing the Start button. See you in the next lesson. Okay, after a short loading time, Enscape should show your project. If Enscape didn't open, but instead returned an error message, have a look at the end of this playlist. There is a troubleshooting part you can switch to right now. Most likely you'll just have to update your graphics card driver. We'll show you how. From now on, Enscape is your window into your project however you work. Any changes will update in Enscape immediately, be it drawing a floor or walls, moving objects, changing materials or view settings. You design and Enscape displays it. We'll have a closer look at that later on, but first I want to show you how you can navigate and explore your scene. First of all, press F on your keyboard whenever you like to open the view management. Here you can see all the 3D views in your project. If you have predefined perspectives, you can always jump to them right away. You don't have any yet? Well, you can use Enscape to set them up. Just click the Create View button down here. Enscape will save the current position and daytime in your design application project. Let's close the view management by pressing Escape or the Home button. And let's open the Help menu by pressing the H key or the question mark in the upper right. Enscape uses the WASD control scheme for navigation. W to move forwards, S to move backwards, a and D to move left and right. Press and hold the left mouse button and move your mouse. This is how you change your perspective and look around. If you've ever played a 3D game, you will feel at home right away. If this way of movement feels new or uncomfortable at first, try this. Just hold down the W key and the left mouse button at the same time and see how you move forward. Move the mouse gently left and right and notice how you can steer where you're going. Do this for a while and you'll get used to it in no time. If you feel like you'd want to move faster or slower, find that setting, along with multiple others, in the Renderer window settings. Input tab right here. There are two types of movement in Enscape, walk mode and fly mode. You can toggle between the two modes by pressing the space bar. In walk mode, you stay on the ground and collide with objects. In fly mode, you can move up and down as well by pressing E and Q, and you can move through any obstacles. Jump to any point in your project directly by double-clicking on it. If you prefer to use an Xbox controller or a 3D connection space mouse to move around, feel free to connect it. Enscape will detect it automatically. Take some time to get familiar with the navigation. This is the only thing you really need to learn to be productive with Enscape. So, make sure to get around all right. Once you feel good about it, I see you in the next lesson. Let's have a closer look at the view management now. 
It's good practice to set up views early in your project, so you have reference points you can always return to and track document progress in. Let's open the view management again by pressing the F key. All the 3D views in your project are listed here. Select a 3D view by left-clicking in the list and the Enscape camera will move to that position and change the daytime if any is set up in your design application. This icon in the bottom left corner is new with Enscape 3.2. If there are any geometry changes saved in your 3D view, like hidden objects or layers, section cuts or design options, they will be applied accordingly in Enscape when this export geometry setting is enabled. To stop geometry from updating when you switch through views, simply disable this setting. By clicking on the Edit button, we can mark a 3D view as favorite to access it easier, or we can link a visual settings preset to it. We'll return to this later when we check out the visual settings. By clicking on Create View, you can generate a new 3D view back in your design application. Enscape will save the perspective and time of day and any other settings copied from the currently selected view. You can return to the selected view anytime by pressing 0 on your numpad. See it as a save point you can always return to if you get lost somewhere. In this lesson we will dive into the user interface in SketchUp. From left to right in the Enscape toolbar there is the Start Enscape button, the Live Updates toggle. This is useful if you're planning to perform a lot of changes to your project in a row and don't want Enscape to reload every time. Just pause the updates and restart them to load all changes at once. The Synchronize Views button locks the Enscape camera to your SketchUp view. Just use your familiar ways of navigating the scene and Enscape will follow. Great if you're just getting started. The Enscape Objects dialog holds light sources to use in Enscape. We'll cover these in the lighting section of this learning path. Apart from that, this is where you can place sound sources in your Enscape scene and you can relink other SketchUp files to add detail to your Enscape visualization that would otherwise slow down SketchUp. Next is the Asset Library. The Asset Library is a window in which you can choose from a multitude of high-quality 3D models to enrich your visualization with. For now, just be aware that you can pick any model from this list, click it and place it in your SketchUp project. This will place a low detail placeholder in SketchUp so it doesn't suffer performance, but it will place a high quality 3D model in your Enscape visualization, so you don't have to worry about the details. Next is the Material Library. It grants you access to a selection of predefined materials that you can load in right into your SketchUp project. While you can edit them any way you like, these are set up to provide a great look right out of the box. Next is the Material Editor. We will use it later on to enhance our SketchUp materials to display all the detail we want in a photorealistic image. Manage Uploads is where you will find the 360 panoramas and web standalones you will create. In this interface you can manage your panoramas and upload them to the Enscape Cloud. And you can always find a list of your web standalones in this tab. We'll review how to set these up later when we take a look at the exports. The general settings will open a window you can set up global changes for Enscape, like performance, network settings, licensing and your language. The Feedback button is used to get in contact with our customer success team and will provide them with crucial data to analyze problems you may be experiencing. If you have trouble with Enscape, you can also skip right to the end of this learning path to access the troubleshooting area. Lastly, the About button will provide you with information about your Enscape version and can be used to check for new releases. In this video we will have a look at the visual settings. 
This is where you control the look of your Enscape visualization, be it as an image, video or a virtual reality experience. Here you can set up your camera, environment and your export settings. First, keep in mind if you ever forget the use of a certain setting, you can always hover your mouse on top of it to see a description. Use this arrow here to open a side panel that stores your settings presets. If you open it for the first time, you only see one, custom preset, as well as a button you can use to create a new one. Let's create a new preset and call it paper. In the main tab under style, select white to display your model without colors, like a paper model. Let's also drive up the outline slider to get a nice accentuation and display the model in a stylized way. You can now switch between your two settings presets at any time and you can even connect them with your views in the view management. All of the settings in this interface can be controlled by a preset. Let's check them out. In the main tab you can change your rendering style not just to white mode but also to polystyro mode and the light view. Polystyrol is designed to display your project with translucency when it's hit by sunlight, so it looks like made from wax. The light view displays your model as a heat map, showing the amount of light as looks on a dynamic scale. You can edit the camera exposure, controlling the image brightness, and the field of view for a fisheye lens effect or for near-orthographic view. You can enable depth of field for a DSLR camera style effect. Just disable autofocus and move the focal point to select the target. In the image tab you can perform regular image settings like saturation or contrast. I like to dial down the highlights contrast so the sky isn't too overblown. The Atmosphere tab allows you to add fog for atmospheric weather and lighting effects. Control the sun and the night sky brightness. Shadow sharpness. And artificial light brightness. This one controls the brightness of all the lights you have placed in your project. Very useful if you want to have all lights turned off at once or dial them up so you can see them during day. The Sky tab defines the look of the environment. Here you can pick out one of the horizons Enscape provides, or pick a skybox. To learn more about skyboxes, have a look into our video on skyboxes, HDRIs and 360 degree environments. Here you can also change the cloud density and cirrus amount. The last tab in the Visual Settings window is the Output tab. Here you can set your rendering resolution, choose the output format and decide to export additional render layers for post-production. As a last step before exporting our first images, we'll have a look at the Material Editor and how to set up convincing surfaces. You can open the Enscape Material Editor by clicking the Checkered Sphere icon in your Design Application interface. You'll see a window showing the selected material on the right and a list of all your materials in your project on the left. Notice that the Enscape Material Editor accesses the same materials as your Design Application. Enscape just adds some information and functionalities. You set up and apply a material in your Design Application, but you can edit it in the Enscape Material Editor. At the top there is a drop-down menu to choose from multiple material types Default, Grass, Water, Foliage, Clear Coat and Carpet. For this video we will focus on the default material as it's the most flexible and most commonly used. Here three areas are the most important for 95% of all materials. Albedo or color, height for bump, normal and displacement maps and reflections to control how glossy an object will appear. They can be controlled via the inputs you see here, or with an image you can use as texture. To set up most of your materials, you will use a color and a height texture. For now, it's best to get them from an online source, like polygon.com or cc0textures.com. Let's try it with a simple material. Click the link in the description of this video to download the same material I'm using, 
or pick any other, they should work exactly the same. As a rule of thumb for Enscape, I like to go with 2K textures. They are high detail enough for close-ups, but small enough you don't need to worry using many of them. Download the zip file, grab the color, displacement and the roughness image and store them wherever you want on your machine. Next we're going to link them to a material in our scene. Once again, with the Enscape Material Editor you don't create or assign materials. You do this in your design application. You can then select them in the Enscape Material Editor and add the texture we downloaded. First, we click the plus icon next to Albedo Texture. This is where we add the color texture. Check the scale. Does it look right to you? Great. If not, let's click this texture icon at the top, enable explicit texture transformation and enter a value that looks correct. Let's return to the general tab. Click the plus icon in the height area. Here we will connect the displacement texture we downloaded. See the surface 3D relief effect? Let me disable color and reduce the roughness so you see it better. The height map is the secret to convincing visualizations. It allows you to add an enormous amount of realism to every surface with little effort. There is multiple types of height maps. For a subtle detail, we take the bump map setting and adjust the strength. For a strong surface deformation, like for cobblestones, bricks or rocks, choose the displacement setting. Be prepared to dial down the strength as this has a very strong effect. Lastly, another way to add a lot of detail using a texture is the roughness input. Let's connect the roughness texture to have a varying reflectivity on the surface. Great! This is our first material. Let's go over some more functions in this material editor. Instead of using just a color or just a texture, you can combine both of them by dialing down the image fade slider. For transparent surfaces like glass, enable transparency and dial down the opacity. Also make sure to dial down the roughness so you have perfect reflections. Tip: For stronger reflections in your glass, try changing the color to something darker and increase the opacity again. Try playing around with that a bit. For any metallic objects, make sure to dial up the metallic slider for correct reflections. For an object to emit light, enable self-illumination. However, don't use this alone to illuminate your scene, always use it with artificial lights to ensure a smooth lighting. If you want to display a video on your surface, simply load the video file where you would load an image texture. Lastly, to display a surface as grass or water, select the right type in the type selection. The 3D asset system in Enscape provides more than 2000 high quality real time optimized models for you to enhance your scene with. It's simple, just pick any model from the 11 categories, click it with the left mouse button and place it in SketchUp. The asset will be placed as simplified placeholder in SketchUp to save performance where it's important. Enscape will show the full high detail model. This is an excellent way to add detail to your scene, the key ingredient for a believable visualization. All of these models are included in any Enscape subscription. Also, our 3D artists are working tirelessly to add new assets and extend the library. By default, the 3D asset library will download the assets over and over. Click this checkbox in the lower right corner to download an offline version of the library for it to load faster upon startup. You can mark assets as favorites by clicking this star icon. This will store them in the favorite folder. 
If you have your own custom 3D models you would like to use as Enscape assets, you can import them in OBJ, FBX or GLTF format in the custom asset part of this interface. We will cover this in a more advanced lesson. If you want to dive deeper into this right away, have a look at the knowledge base link in the description. With the Asset Placement tool, we have additionally moved the option to place assets into the Enscape Renderer window. While you can still place assets in your respective design application, just like before, we have added this interface to enable you to place models and fill your design more easily and in less time. So let's explore the new abilities this interface grants our users in detail. To open the Asset Library in the Enscape Render window, click this button or press the L key on your keyboard. This will open an interface that accesses the same Enscape assets as the Asset Library in your design application, even including any custom assets you may have added. At the top you will find the search bar and a magnifying glass button to confirm your search. Next to that we have an infinity sign you can click to filter for the usual categories and your favorite assets. And a tag icon to, well, access the various tags and refine your search by the keywords available in this list. Once you've selected an asset you want to place in the scene, just click it using the left mouse button and select a surface to place it on in the Enscape visualization. Left click again to confirm the placement. You'll notice that at first you'll only see a grey placeholder representation of the asset you've placed. That's fine. You can continue placing assets and, once you're finished, click on Apply Changes or discard all if you've changed your mind. Applying the changes will load the full quality model in your Enscape design and it will place the placeholder in your host project. Imagine this, you're exploring your Enscape design, maybe to produce some nice renderings for your client to review. You notice an area could use a little more detail. Rather than having to go back to the host application, find the area you're looking at and clumsily place a couple assets there, you can just hit the L key and enrich your visualization right there on the spot. Nice, isn't it? But we are just getting started. You can use the new interface to move, rotate and scale your assets too. Let's collapse the asset selection for now to focus on the action buttons on the very left. There's the Select button, the Translation, Rotation and Scaling button. Access the Translation button with the hotkey T, Rotation using hotkey R and Scaling using the hotkey G. Some design applications don't support rotation in all axes. If the rotation button is grayed out for you, use the translation mode to rotate an asset along the up axis. Using these modes is fairly simple. Click on an asset to edit it. You will notice this reverts the asset back into preview mode until we apply the changes again. Clicking on an asset will display a gizmo tool you can use to perform changes. In translation mode, clicking the center of the gizmo will allow you to move the asset on all axes at once, following the surfaces in your scene. Using one of the three arrows moves the asset along one specific axis, and grabbing the green circle rotates the asset along the up axis. It's also worth taking a look at the input fields at the bottom of the screen. Here you can enter numeric values for each of the individual axes and for the rotation. Note that these are all global values, so to add or detract a certain value, you'll have to enter the resulting value, not the amount you want the value to change by. The rotation and scaling tools work exactly the same way. Don't forget to click Apply Changes to sync the changes back to the design application and save them. It's worth noting that you can also delete assets using this interface. 
just select them and hit the trash button or press the delete key. So far we have only placed individual assets. A real workflow boost hides behind this button here, the multi-asset placement tool. Clicking this button will open a new panel at the bottom of the screen. Here we'll find the placement area selection, an overview of the selected assets to be placed and mixed, and additional placement options. You may realize at this point that you can no longer look around using the left mouse button. I recommend a mix of the WASD keys and the right mouse button, used to orbit around an object you click, to get around and navigate in this mode. You'll probably first want to select a few assets you want to scatter across the scene. To do so, just click on the assets in the selection tab. Note that you can absolutely combine any assets from Enscape with custom assets you may find in this tab to mix them together. Once you know what assets to place, let's select an area to place them on. For this, you can use the rectangular selection, the circular selection or the bucket selection. The rectangular selection type will ask you to place two points on one or multiple surfaces in the Enscape interface. It will connect these two points with a strip of blue transparent shading. This is where the selected assets will be placed. You can alter the width using this slider. Tip! If you want to redefine the placement selection area, just grab one of the orange spheres clicking the left mouse button and move it. The circular selection mode asks you to click once to define the center of the placement area, move your mouse to define the diameter and click a second time to confirm the selection scale. The bucket selection enables you to select an entire surface, as defined in your host design application, to be populated with assets. All right. For all these placement modes, the density slider is where you control the population density. Here are some more attributes to edit. Choose random distribution for a chaotic placement. Other than random, you can also pick Jitter as a distribution type, which will place the assets on a grid with random offsets. Essentially, this is a halfway between random and uniform. And uniform for an even placement on the grid. Again, the scale of the grid is being controlled by the density slider. The last option to choose for the placement is whether you want the assets to be randomly rotated or not. I think for most natural looking purposes, you'll want to keep this option checked. This is key for, for example, trees, plants and humans to look less repetitive. However, in some cases, for example parked cars, you'll want assets to be facing the same direction. If you want to keep the settings but re-roll the random factor, click on Regenerate. If you are uncertain and you would like to see the actual assets to decide, click Preview Selected Area to load the full high-quality assets into the scene. This may take a short while, but you'll see the finished result before applying the changes. Alright, we are pretty much done. You can confirm the placement by clicking this button or cancel the operation by clicking the X right next to it. Lastly, click Apply Changes to sync all the new assets back to your host project. Hope this helps! Have fun no longer having to place assets manually and individually. In this lesson we will explore how to render a still image using Enscape and what settings could be the most interesting for you while doing so. 
To render an image using Enscape is really simple. Just press this button up here or press the hotkey, which is Shift and F11 by default. Enscape will ask you where you would like to save the image and will render it right away. Done. So to have something to tell you in this lesson, let's go over some more details and settings that you might want to use to set up an image. First, the resolution. You can change it in the visual settings output tab. If you don't know what resolution to go with, leave it at default. Full HD is perfectly fine in most cases. If you'd like to print it on a larger scale, you can also go with Ultra HD or higher values, but if your graphics card runs out of available memory, Enscape may crash during rendering. When selecting Custom as a resolution, you can choose the aspect ratio of your export 3D. In this case, it is recommended to enable the save frame in the Enscape interface, so you're always aware of the perspective of the resulting image. If you'd like to change the hotkey to render an image to any other combination, you can do so in the Renderer Window Settings Input tab. In the Output tab, you can also set up a default folder, in case you don't want to be prompted to choose a location every time. And you can tell Enscape to name the rendering automatically. You can choose the default file type and, if you want to post-process your rendering, you can enable Export Object ID, Material ID and Depth Channel. To export not one, but four images enabling you to edit any elements of your rendering separately in a 2D software if required. Tip! If you want to export an alpha channel, meaning a black and white mask for your rendering to add a custom background, enable Export Object ID, Material ID and Depth Channel and dial the depth range all the way up to 10,000 meters. You'll receive a map you can use to easily replace the background. To render a 360 degree panorama, simply move to the desired location and press this button. You can choose to render a mono or a stereo panorama. Stereo panoramas, when used with Google Cardboards or other mobile virtual reality solutions, allow the viewer to perceive the dimensions and scale of the environment. The Enscape camera will rotate and render the surrounding environment. Mono panoramas, however, only take half as long to render. You can pick a resolution for panoramas in the Visual Settings Output tab. You might have noticed that this time Enscape didn't ask us where to save the result. That's because you can find the panoramas back in your design application, in the Manage Uploads interface. We have overhauled this interface with the release of Enscape 3.2, so if your interface looks different, it's a good idea to update Enscape. Let's have a close look at the new interface. Here you can see your panoramas grouped by the project they were created in. Let's hover with our mouse over the panorama thumbnail. Now we can see an overlay appear that we can use to manage the panorama. We can also see the date it was taken, the resolution and whether it's a mono or a stereo panorama. The button to the left allows you to save your panorama as regular image file locally on your computer. The trash bin next to it will delete the panorama file from your computer. It is only available if the panorama was not yet uploaded to the cloud. If your panorama is in the cloud and you want to delete it, you will need to remove it from the cloud first. The next button is particularly useful. You can use it to upload a panorama that has not been moved to the cloud yet, instead of an existing panorama. This way you can replace individual panoramas or panoramas in an existing gallery or tour while maintaining the QR code and URL, so you can have a permanent link with changing content. 
The Upload Panorama to Cloud button is where it gets really interesting. Here, Enscape will upload the panorama to the cloud, where you can access it from any device right away via browser. Click the new three dots button to see the sharing options now available to you. You can share the QR code or the link. Print the QR code alongside your still image renderings, so anyone seeing it can get the full picture on their phone right away. Now that the panorama is accessible online, we have additional options available to manage it and group it with other panoramas to a gallery or tour. To access these options, you'll have to log in to the Enscape License Center. You can do so by going to our website, www.enscape3d.com, and clicking this button at the top right. Alternatively, you can enter this link to enter the License Center. Make sure to use the email address that's connected to your license key as login credentials. You can always review it in your general settings, found in the design application interface under general settings, licensing and privacy. Additionally, make sure to be logged into a user account by clicking this button up here in case it says login. Any panoramas that have been uploaded before logging into your account using this button will have to be uploaded again to become accessible in the online upload management. If you have any trouble logging into your account, please speak to your Enscape account administrator and or refer to the knowledge base link in the description. Alright, now that we are logged into the web interface, you can see a number of folders named after the projects you have uploaded panoramas from before. Left click on one to open it. We can now click on a panorama to open it or click on the three dots here to access sharing options. Copying or changing the link or sending an email containing the link directly from this interface. To rename the panorama, or move it somewhere else in the folder structure. Apart from this, you can create new folders using this button. And you can choose to create a mono panorama gallery. This last button will open a window asking you to select the panoramas from this project to add to the gallery. Don't worry, you can still add and remove panoramas later on, but you can only add panoramas from one single project to a gallery. Click on Start Editing to begin editing the gallery. We'll see the first panorama, some buttons in the top left, an X in the top right. This can be used to return to the previous page and close the gallery editor. We'll see a previous and next button on each side, which you can use to slide through the panoramas. You'll see a full screen button at the bottom right and an overlay at the bottom, which will move into view when hovered over with your mouse. Here you can change the order of appearance of the panoramas by clicking and holding the left mouse button on the six dots in the corner. You can also choose to delete a panorama from the gallery by clicking the X button in the top right. The buttons in the top left enable you to save the gallery. Clicking them will ask you whether you want to keep this as a simple gallery that you can navigate via the previous and next buttons or if you want to enable the tour mode. You can change the same setting when clicking this button on the very left. Tour mode will display the other panoramas in the tour as circles on the screen, pointing towards the location the other panoramas have been taken in. You have a choice. Do you only want to display the closest two waypoints at a given time, or do you want to display all of them? Again, you can choose to change this setting at any time later on.
You can also still add additional panoramas to the list by clicking the plus icon here. Once we have set the settings the way we want them to be, we click Save to save the gallery in our folder structure. Now we can access the gallery like we can a regular panorama in this online interface and get a link to share it with anybody. To render a video, first we need to set up a video path. To do this, we open the video editor by clicking this button or pressing V on the keyboard. Don't forget you can always open the help panel with the H key on your keyboard or clicking this button. When the video editor interface is opened, the second tab will provide a handy overview. Before going into detail about the interface, let's first block out a rough video path. To do this, we will place keyframes. Keyframes are essentially waymarks in time and space that the camera will fly through later when exporting the final video. To place a keyframe, we press the K key or click the plus icon in the lower right corner here. This is what the keyframe looks like in Enscape. By placing another keyframe, we see that they are being connected by a video path automatically. This way we can fly through our project and gather nice perspectives, pressing K whenever we want to capture a view in our video. Check your video path once in a while to make sure you're not hitting any obstacles. If that's the case, simply place an additional keyframe by clicking anywhere on the video path. Move the camera so the obstacle is out of the way and click Update. Let's click the exit keyframe button or press escape on the keyboard to exit the keyframe and see the full video path again. You can preview the video you've created at any point by clicking the play button or pressing P on your keyboard. At this point, if you're satisfied with the outcome, you can already render the video file. Just press the export button here at the bottom right. Enscape will ask you what export settings you'd like to apply to the video. I recommend to go with the default settings. Click Export and choose a location for your file. Enscape will start rendering the video right away. Let's have a closer look at the interface though, so you can design your videos even better. If you ever want to delete your current path to begin from scratch, save or load it, you can do so in the video path menu up here. Below that, you can choose to enable a grid line overlay. Use the total duration input to change the overall length of the video. Click on the time to open an input field. Here you can either input the time numerically in hours, minutes and seconds, or use the arrow buttons to select the time. This option will affect the whole video equally. If you have already set up timestamps, they will also be changed proportionally. Next, you can choose to ease in and out, meaning either starting and ending the video standing still or moving with equal speed throughout. Here you can also enable the shaky camera effect, adding a human-like wobble to the camera movement. The area below is only available when a keyframe is selected. Here you can delete this particular keyframe or update any changes. And you can set these four values for each keyframe. Timestamp, time of day, focal point, field of view. The timestamp is the time in seconds it takes to reach the currently selected keyframe. So obviously for the first keyframe it will always be zero. In all the other keyframes this allows you to control the speed of the video. Let's say we want to fly fast at first while moving around the exterior and then slow down to really highlight the interior. Click on the keyframe where you want to start slowing down to enter the keyframe. Here let's enter a low value for the time, for example 10 seconds. 
After all, you want to move fast up to this point. Don't forget to click update so your changes are saved. Let's switch to one of the following keyframes to enter the second timestamp value. Here, let's enter a value that's a lot higher, for example, 30 seconds. Now we will reach the previous keyframe at second 10 and this keyframe at second 30. So we'll slow down a lot, allowing the user to take in our beautiful interior design. This way you can control all the values throughout your video. Time of day can be keyed to simulate a time lapse. Focal point will only have an effect when depth of field is enabled in the visual settings main tab. And autofocus is disabled. Then you can control the focal distance, allowing for cinematic effects. Field of view can be used to add a zoom effect to your video. Notice that all the keyed values can be reviewed anytime on the timeline at the bottom. Apart from using Enscape to export images, panoramas and videos, you can also export independent, interactive standalone experiences and share them for free without additional licenses needed. To turn your Enscape visualization into a shareable experience, simply use this button up here. There is two types to choose from, the EXE standalone file and the web standalone file. By clicking the web standalone button, Enscape will immediately begin uploading the Enscape scene to your cloud, where you can review it in a browser from anywhere in the world. Share the link with anybody or put it on your website. As you see, the visual quality is a tiny bit lower when displayed in a browser, but in turn, the system requirements are lower too. So if the computer runs a Chrome or Firefox browser, chances are high you can run it just fine. If you'd like to share your visualization with someone using a machine that meets our system requirements in full, export an identical copy of Enscape by clicking the EXE standalone button. Again, a fully functional copy of Enscape you can share with anybody, just no longer connected to your design application, so there is no editing possible. To export an EXE standalone file, all it takes is once again just a click of a button. So before we do that, let me first show you how you can actually customize it with your own company logo and corporate identity. To do this, open the renderer window settings. On the first page already, you can choose a custom icon for the standalone file, a custom window title, loading screen, and a watermark to overlay your presentation if you want that. This way you can customize each standalone executable you want to present with, adding a personal note to your every visualization. Okay, let's export the standalone file and have a look at it. Enscape will create one single file in the chosen directory, containing the Enscape engine and your project. Let's double click it to open. See? An exact copy of the Enscape window, just entirely independent. You can still select any views you might have filed as favorites. And on the left you can access many Enscape settings for performance, style, or even VR. Yes, the Enscape standalone files are fully VR compatible, just like Enscape itself. 
This means with Enscape you can create a VR experience with just two clicks. Starting Enscape and exporting the scene. So, as a next step, we should take a closer look at virtual reality in Enscape. Hey, welcome to the troubleshooting portion of this learning path. If you're here, you've either reached the end of the training, congratulations, or you jumped here directly because you got stuck somewhere along the way. If that's the case, let's go through the possible roadblocks in order. If you couldn't install Enscape in the first place, maybe because the EXE file type seems unfamiliar, it's likely you're currently working on a Mac. Enscape unfortunately doesn't support iOS at this point. If you're running into this issue, please first of all check our system requirements, which are linked in the description. If your Mac contains an AMD graphics card that meets our system requirements, you can use Bootcamp to install Windows and run Enscape on it. Parallels is sadly not supported. If you install Enscape but can't find it afterwards, be aware that Enscape is a plugin, so it won't show up on your desktop. You will only find it in your design application interface. If you can't find it here, please refer to the Do I have the right CAD lesson in this playlist and the Installing Enscape lesson. If you're running into troubles when opening Enscape, there is most likely one of four reasons for that. Either your graphics card driver is out of date. If you've made sure to update your graphics card driver beforehand, as described in the corresponding video in this playlist, this should be ruled out. If not, please proceed to do so and test again. Secondly, maybe your graphics card is incompatible. Please make sure you've checked your computer hardware, as described in the Do I meet the system requirements lesson. If you have a compatible graphics card from AMD or Nvidia, but it's crashing nonetheless, or even telling you Enscape is using the graphics card from Intel, please refer to the knowledge base article Multi-GPU Issues, which is linked in the description. If all these points are verified, but Enscape still crashes during startup or loads indefinitely, it's possible that your model is big or complex enough so your hardware runs into issues. This should be a rare case, so please make sure to check by loading another small sample project or even an entirely empty project. If this loads just fine, you might want to try reducing the complexity of the project you want to visualize. Here, it's worth noting that the part that has the biggest impact on the VRAM on your graphics card are texture files. Try to go with 2K resolution for the textures and you should be fine. Or try cutting the project into portions using section cuts to reduce the size of your visualization. Okay, let's move on. What can we do if Enscape opens but your project is shown incorrectly? If you don't see your project at all, it's likely the camera is just positioned somewhere it's not in view. Try hitting the number keys on your numpad, 2 or 5, and the camera should be positioned with the entire project in view right away. Alternatively, open the view management, pressing the F key in the Enscape interface. Here is where you can see all the views from your design application. It's also worth noting that Enscape will take the view settings from the selected view or scene. This means if certain parts of the project don't show up or some visibility changes are not applied in Enscape, it's always useful to check if you are in the right view or scene in Enscape at the moment. If you experience crashes while trying to render an image or video, this again indicates that maybe the scene is too complex to fit on your graphics card. To tackle this, first, please make sure your graphics card drivers are up to date. Reduce the resolution down to full HD and the rendering quality to high, or even lower, just to check if this resolves the issue. If yes, we know it has to do with the resolution, complexity and scale of your outputs. If your GPU is not an RTX card, try disabling the RTX option found in the general settings, performance options. Also, try cutting the model using section cuts to reduce the workload. It also could be worth reviewing the textures in the project to see if these can be reduced or optimized in any way. Again, a 2K texture resolution is perfectly sufficient in almost all cases. Lastly, rebooting the machine before using Enscape will clear the VRAM, freeing up resources for Enscape on the GPU. We are confident that through this onboarding training, along with the self-help available via the knowledge base, you should have the materials available to enable you to continue work without a time delay. However, 
Should you need support, please feel free to reach out to us via the feedback button or via our web contact form on nscape3d.com. To help us solving your problem, please make sure to have the Include Log Files into Feedback option enabled. Also, please leave us a description of what exactly happened and what you did before the issue occurred. Lastly, please make sure your email address is entered correctly so you'll receive a response to the right address.